So welcome back to We're Not Really Here for our full-time analysis. I'm joined on the sofa again by Sean to Michael Brown and Kyle Walker. So the game finished one all, a disappointing one all. So we're going to have a little look through the game and um, have a little focus on Foden's goal as well. So let's start off um, straight away with that, guys. So Foden came on at half time, been on the pitch five, six minutes, come straight up with the goal. So it was exactly the start that we we needed in the second half, Michael. Well, we were talking about what who could contribute from the bench, young players in the build-up, Torres, Ford, and he was excellent, wasn't he? It wasn't just his goal, it was that enthusiasm that he had to go and make things happen, try to create dynamic going forward, good on the ball, as we know. But with his goal, to that touch on the turn, as it rolls up, to have the composure just to wait. And a lot of people would actually try and rush that. He doesn't, turns, pivots and gets that goal and that gave him confidence. And it was a different Manchester City. I thought the, the intensity was higher. The shots at goal that we mentioned was much better, miles better return. They pushed all the way, it just didn't seem to be. Right at the end there, Riyad Mahrez just wasn't falling for him. And it was just one of those days really that they couldn't get the ball over the line to get that winner. Now, Sean, we talked about momentum in the first half and that's one of Phil Foden's abilities, isn't it? To come on and actually change the momentum and actually change the swing of the game. Yes, that's what he bought. He, as Brownie said, he bought that energy. Uh, he always does that. Whether he starts or not, you see with, with him, he brings an intensity because he's, I guess in his mind, he's like, listen, I want to show people exactly. I, I deserve to be here and be here on a regular basis. So he brings an intensity and a level. Uh, so pleased that he's able to get that goal. We didn't quite um, kick on as I thought we would to, to go on and produce a second, third and, and go on. But yes, Phil Ferdin uh, brought the energy and I th it would have been good if he actually got another opportunity or the forward lines had got more opportunities to be able to get their second, second goal. Of course, it was an incredible finish by Phil for that goal. Also, looking at the assist there from Cancelo with that brilliant cross, you specifically at halftime were talking about the need to have him getting down that left-hand side. Yeah, well, truth be told, I was thinking a natural with, with uh, Sachenko being on there because then he doesn't cut back on the right foot. But I guess that was probably the information they said because second half, he did not go down that left-hand side and sort of chop back on his right. He kept going down that left-hand side, and that's what produced the goal. He, he done the little beat where he fakes to go on the right foot, chops it back to his left, and then he sort of goes to the byline and rips across. And there, there was Phil Ferdin to, to do the rest. So uh, that was certainly something they mentioned. Um, and it, it was good to see him do that. It gave more of a balance to, to the team. Now, it was a frustra frustrating rest of the second half because possession isn't the issue, Michael. We see a lot of the ball, but it's actually creating those chances and putting the ball in the back of the net, which just failed to do today. Well, they did. And, and, and again, we, again, we've talked about possession. And I would say against the back five, and I'm not just sitting here saying it's easy. When teams actually bank out of that five, the four in front, it's hard to get through. And we know Manchester City are, are, are very patient. They want to build a play. They want to move the ball around, create those gaps. But I just think the intensity, as soon as we've seen it rise, yes, it's, they're going to wear West Ham down, put them on the back foot, and the chances started to come. They weren't real clear cut fantastic chances all of the time but Raheem Sterling got away a couple of times just didn't fall for him I think it was just one of those days where the finishing just couldn't really be sort of the end product I would say but you've got to say the positives from the team overall the amount of injuries that the club have got still Sergio Aguero there was something you know something niggling him he goes off the pitch and that does make a major impact when we're talking about the amount of players. And in the build-up, we mentioned Ake and Laporte. We didn't mention Fernandinho as well. Such an influential player. So hopefully they can all come back soon. Yeah, and as Michael says there, Sean, we, we had plenty of chances, especially towards the end there. We were getting right on the edge of our seats. Um, as a finishing expert yourself, what was lacking there today when it came to that you know, at, you know, end product? I think it was... Uh Either the touch was too 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 strong when we, we look at the Sterling situation. He's gotten through. That first touch was just, an, I think, a yard too much because then he has to be lucky with it going past the keeper because the keeper then is only a yard or two at best. So the keeper's likely to get something on it. And I think that will be where he'll be disappointed. Mares going to the byline. My first thought is... Once he's, once he's going across the player, is getting the ball out of his feet to either select that pass or have that shot. But he seemed to take sort of the extra touches, which allowed the defender, the desperate defender, to get back and that everything narrowing down to, to not 
finally sort of um, having a good option. So he shoots at a narrow angle and you anticipate the keeper to save that as well. Now, one player we did see come on on the 68th minute was Kevin De Bruyne. He, um, Bernardo Silva made way for him. How important was him for, to get some minutes, to get some action? It's a jam-packed schedule. We go back into Champions League football on Tuesday. How important was it for him to, to see some game time? Well, it was important. When we've seen him on the bench, you've probably felt that he could have started. But it's how much just risk to reward, really. You don't want to lose Kevin De Bruyne for such a, a long period of time. But as soon as he comes on, you, you do get that sort of lift the players, as I said, you realise that he can do things with the ball. He can put crosses in, deliveries. We've seen that free kick that was straight at the goalkeeper. I mean, you even see them lying behind because they you were know, lying behind the, the four that were in the wall. So you're actually expecting things from Kevin De Bruyne. It's just those areas just didn't fall from where he could deliver that killer pass and it just wasn't as comfortable. But just going back to the Sterling chance, he will be disappointed there where he's through on goal. Fabianski does well, so it's not just the touch. Fabianski comes down and smothers it, you know, really, really quickly. Um, but yeah, I think Manchester City need to be a little bit sharper in front of goal going forward. I expect when they were winning, when City were winning the title, they were really, really putting those uh, opportunities away. And a player that was, of course, sharp today was Phil Foden, and we can hear from him now. Phil, is that um, a good point in the end or not? Um, no, obviously not. We would like to get the three points today. Um, but I think we played very well and controlled most of the game. So I think we're going to be disappointed not to get the win today. Um, but yeah, we're not a team who will sulk a lot, you know. We'll probably um, get over it by tomorrow and try, and try and work on things that we can improve and, and go next game. What were the uh, instructions to you from the boss at, at half-time? Because you, you made a good impact. Yeah, just try to be live, you know, come on and make a difference. And, yeah, I tried to do that. Um, and obviously I got the goal. And, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate we couldn't get the second. But, um, yeah, when another day, um, Brad's finished his chances and we had. So, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're obviously sitting quite deep. That's their game plan. You played a bit quicker second half. Is that better? Yeah, definitely. I think we came out second half playing um, a lot quicker, like you said, and playing more aggressive. Um, and, yeah, I think we need to just work on um, finishing more chances and, and we should be OK. Yeah, first off, I mean, obviously you were on the side watching, but it, whether that's the amount of games that are coming thick and fast at the moment and their game plan, it was it was hard work. Yeah, I think we started slow in the first half. Um, you know, we weren't passing quick enough um, around the back, and you know we didn't have we didn't have a um, good tempo. But um, I think um, the manager spoke well in um, at half time, and we came out in the second half playing much better football. Maybe more of the chances need to fall to you. You're in in the goals in recent weeks, recent yeah, out you know, outings. Yeah, you know, I always like to get into the box and arrive there. But, um, yeah, I enjoy scoring goals, so I'm going to try and continue that form. Yeah, and nice. Obviously, you've had, a, I suppose, and it's fair to say, a difficult few weeks. We've had a strange few weeks, obviously, not being involved with England. So nice to just be back on a pitch playing football. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's nice to be playing as much as possible. Um, you know, because I, I love this club and I love playing for them. So, so yeah, I enjoy it. Well done today. Thank you. And we love you too, Phil Foden. Quite an honest interview from him there. And Michael, you particularly were noddling along at points on that. You agree with some of what he said there? I agree. It's what we've talked about. The pace and the tempo start of the second half increased and opportunities come their way. Nothing that we didn't say. Chances, Raheem Sterling, as he said, would, would be disappointed. It's great watching him in it. That, just that, how much he loves the club, how much he's, just that young face. He's done so much and has won so many things and he still wants to do better every day. Uh, it's, it's great to see and that enthusiasm, like we've mentioned, on his face. But he will be disappointed. That's where the football club is at the moment. They draw a game and... They're not happy. They want to improve all the time, whether they win, whether they lose. And it's it's just one of those days. It's the Premier League. It's really tight at the moment. And as I said, one thing we've got to take into account where we say about, and it's all right we're sitting here saying they've got to be quicker. They've got to do it with intensity. They're playing in the week, West Ham or not. You know, it, it does change lots of things. Now, Sean, something that Phil Foden did say there was they'll be frustrated today, but they'll wake up tomorrow. They've got to brush themselves off. They've got to go again. They've got a huge game in the Champions League on Tuesday. So it's very important for them that they forget about this and they go again as soon as possible. That's something you learn at the highest level. You understand that you could have times when you're, you're flying and you've, you've, you can't just continue to think, well, this next game's going to be easy. Likewise, if you have a game and it's not so good, you've got to get that in the back of your mind and think the next game's so important. So these boys will be so used to being able to, OK, we didn't have our best of games. We've got a draw. We've got a big game coming up. We tune into that and we put on a big performance. 
Yeah, and we see, you know, so many games coming up and, and we played, we mentioned at half time this is the first time in three years that we've kept the same team. You won't be expecting the same team on Tuesday night, will you? Do we dare say that? <laughs> I don't know. I think Pep will do it just to throw everybody, won't he? Because he's, he's obviously the, the best in the business. He knows what he's doing. But ultimately, it comes down to the squad. When you, all the games are coming, but with the injuries... It's hard to make these changes that we would expect to see. That's the, that's the difficulty. You need to protect players. And, and they'll, they'll rock up in the morning. They'll have the recovery session. They'll be straight in, seeing how everybody is, if there's any risk, who won't travel. And it's all right saying risk it, but they can't risk players at this moment in time when you've got such a, a busy schedule. Right, throughout this afternoon, we've been asking for you to get involved in our poll of your favourite Manchester City and West Ham players. Yes, players that have played for both. And I've got the results right here. We can see that our winner on the poll was Pablo Zabaleta, recently retired. He obviously moved to West Ham from Manchester City. He got 46% of the possession. Then we've got Carlos Tevez in second with 33% and Ian Bishop with 21% right there. There are three Blues that also played for the Hammers. And I'm guessing that, you know, they're going to be neutrals. That They're happy that, that it was a draw. Both teams got a point. And uh, I'm just a bit gutted that, yeah, we couldn't have a Blue celebration on that one. But, you know, Pablo Zabaleta, once a Blue, always a Blue. He wins that poll. I think Pablo Zabaleta wins most polls that go <laughs> on the City Twitter, to be fair as well. Um, and of course, we've been mentioning at halftime and also before the game, there is another game that is taking place currently just now. The City EDS are playing over the CFA against Arsenal. Um, it was one all there at halftime and it is now 2-1 with a goal from James McAtee. So City are leading 2-1. And of course, um, you can get that on City Plus. You can be watching that live now. You want to see the highlights as well, because of course, as we mentioned, the Arsenal goalkeeper got sent off in the first half. They didn't have a substitute goalkeeper on the bench and so they had to put a defender in net. So you do want to uh, get yourself over to that now or at least see the highlights as well. So that's the City EDS. Now we can bring you um, some post-match post thoughts from our manager, Pep Guardiola. Um, Pep, well, how do you analyse that? Uh, we start really good. I thought we were going to see the goal for the action. Uh... The first time they arrived, um, after we struggled to find it, and especially the last 15 minutes, second half, we were much better. They defend so deep, and uh, we had the chances at the end to score a goal that we could not convert. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, period to struggle together for the problems that we have, and uh, yeah, move forward. Was it the goal that changed the game? Because you started well, but then after they'd scored, it felt like it was, it was a struggle for you. No, I think we didn't play bad except the last... 10 minutes the, the first half. We know where they let them run with Antonio, with the people, how many players arrive in the box, so we knew it. And uh, um, you have periods in that, so yeah, and we have the chances. We have the chances to score and we, we didn't do it. Second half, you had more intensity, more speed in your play that felt like it from the sidelines? No, well, we started really well, so that means that we were already from the beginning. Yeah, and um, Sergio coming off, is that a, a physical problem or...? Injured. He's injured again? Mm -hmm. With the same problem or...? No. A different problem? A serious problem you don't know? I don't know. You don't <laughs> OK. And the change at the end with Zinchenko coming on and Cancelo was... Cancelo had a very good game on the left. Again, was that tactical or was Kyle a problem or...? No, it was to have a left foot in left, a right foot in right. That was okay. the reason why, because in left, we go inside with the right, they have a problems to lose that ball. Uh, we need a player more with the left. And they're a difficult team, West Ham, to play against. Yeah, always. All the teams they are. All the teams? All the teams in Premier League are difficult, yeah. Yeah, but they, they're in a good moment. They gave you some, some headaches today. Yeah, they make a good uh, first half, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, you have to rotate, I guess. Phil came on and gave you something extra today. Yeah, it's not as, just his as goal. As always, as always, he gave us something extra, yeah. Yeah. One of the good players, one of the young players that will yeah. offer things to your team. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So that was the thoughts of our manager, Pep Guardiola. He didn't look very happy, but he was certainly making a few people smile in the studio here. Did you enjoy that one? Well, I did. I just felt sorry for, for the interview. The questions just kept coming. And um, luckily, he has lots of experience asking those questions because Pep was ready for him. He was giving him some short answers. He's not pleased, is he? He wants to do better for his team. He's really, really frustrated. It's hard for a manager. You've got to come out, face everybody, answer all the questions that you don't always want to do. You don't want to tell everybody where your team's up to, who's injured, etc. He'd be disappointed that he's not won. 
and more so that Sergio Aguero is a problem. Well, yeah, I was going to mention that. Sean, Sergio Aguero out again. It's been an issue we've already had this season. He was out from June the 22nd until last Saturday, and here we are facing more injury problems. He's massive for Manchester City, but it's such a big blow. Yes, it is, and let's hope that he's back. You know, he's, he's not out in terms of... Maybe it's a few days and that he's, he's recovered and back. But what, what I know, certainly when I think to myself, and I don't know if Brownie could, could test to this as well, is that you, when you start getting to sort of 32, around that age and on, sometimes, not all players, sometimes you have an injury, you come back, and then you start to find you're getting, you're getting injuries that you never got. I was at, when I was sort of 32, 33, I started to get an injury, and you don't recover as quickly as well. So hopefully Sergio Aguero, you know, he's got a different DNA to a lot of people. So <laughs> I think that Sergio is one of them that could come back really soon. So let's hope so. Yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed. A big, big thank you to all the guests today. Thank you very much, Sean, Michael, of course, Kyle. Thank you. And thank you to everybody at home for joining us on today's We're Not Really Here. We will be back. Kyle and I will be sat here again on Tuesday for our Champions League game. We'll be joined by Jolien Lescott and Richard Dunn. So, of course, there'll probably be a lot of defensive talk going on then. Thank you again for joining us. So today, in our new normal, we no longer have routes at the London Stadium. But hopefully come Tuesday, our new normal might involve, well, I don't want to jinx it, but winning the Champions League. We'll see you then.